Up next in our learning of Vue, I want to talk about Vue CLI. So Vue CLI in very simple terms will allow you to basically scaffold an entire application geared for Vue. It even allows you to deploy to an actual server and there's a lot of documentation behind all of the different services that it actually supports. Now it is a fantastic tool and it even includes a graphic interface that you can use for creating projects and running NPM tasks amongst other things. So why don't we jump right to it. If we go to the get started section, the very first thing we need to do is we need to bring it in through NPM. Now I am assuming that you have NPM already installed. If you don't, head over to nodejs.org and then follow the instructions for installing it in your system. But once you do have it in your terminal, you need to be able to run NPM and get something similar to this. So if we run NPM-V, I am currently running version 6.9. All right, so that's a little bit of a prerequisite for this lesson. So let's jump to it. Let's click right here where it says installation. And the very first thing we need to do is we need to bring in NPM. Now to run this command, you will actually need to run it with sudo. So we'll say sudo npm install, and this will install npm CLI globally. So let's let it do its thing and we'll be right back. Okay, and we are all done. It looked like a couple of things happened in there, but we should be okay. So now we can check that we've done everything correctly by running view dash dash version. So let's do that now. View dash dash version. And sure enough, we have version 3.8.4. Great. So now we have a couple of commands at our disposal. And if we go to the creating a project section here, we can simply run view create and then a name for a project. So let's do that now. Let's create a project view create and let's just call it testing CLI. So this will scaffold an entire project for us, but it's going to need a little bit of guidance. Now, by default, it will use Babel and ESLint, and that is probably the recommended setting that you would want. So you can press enter to continue, and this will bring in all of the dependencies that it needs and will actually make a project for you that is ready to go. A lot like how we explored single component files in the previous episodes, this will do all of that for you automatically. Okay, so now that it's done, we can CD into our project file, and then we can run npm run surf. And this will actually create a local development server for us so that we can actually work on our project. So let's CD into our testing.cli, and then let's go ahead and run npm run surf. So this will basically scaffold everything for you, and it even has hot reloading, which will allow us to change our files, and then it will update in the browser automatically. So it's pretty cool. So what you would do is you would copy this address and bring that over into Chrome. So let's paste that in. And there we go. So this is our view application. Why don't we open it up in our code editor? So here it is in my code editor. So we have an SRC directory and then we have a package.json. Now obviously the package.json file is where all of the dependencies actually get pulled in. So it's pretty cool that it does all of this for us. Additionally, it did scaffold a component for us. So if we look inside the SRC directory, we have this app.view. And this is the page that is being served right here. Notice how it says, welcome to your Vue.js app. So the very first thing we could do is change this and say, hello to all coders. How about that? And as soon as we head back, it's been updated. Now it might be a little hard to see, but I didn't refresh this page at all. This page is actually hot reloading. Let's do it one more time. Let's do two. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to head back and immediately my changes show up. Very cool, very fast way to develop a modern application. So let's explore a little bit more. Let's look at this components folder. Inside of here, there's a hello world.view. And if you look inside this, let me close this up so we can have a little bit more space. You see your typical view component file. I'm going to close this up just so it's a little bit easier to see the structure. So we have template a script and a style exactly like a single file component because that's what this is this hello world.view file is a single component let's open everything back up and why don't we make some changes here let me go ahead and delete everything inside of this class and let me just add a new h1 saying hello coders hit save head back to my application and sure enough we are live hot reloading pretty cool now this image up here, you may be wondering what that is, that is actually in the app.view. Notice here we have an image and then we are calling our hello world component. 
why don't we make a fresh component? Let's get rid of all of this and let's make our very own component. Now this app.view in itself is our main entry point for view. So what you have here is also a single file component. So we have an import for hello world and then we are declaring this as a component. A lot of stuff that we've already talked about in previous episodes. So let's create a new component from scratch. Let me pop this open again and in my components directory let's create a new file and let's call it tasks.view. Okay. So now we need to do our typical single view component setup. So let's say template and then we'll have a script and then optionally we'll have style. You don't have to do your styles in here but we'll add it just to show how it works. So here we'll just say export default and that's it. We have our very own view component right here. So why don't we add a div tag here and say let's add an unordered list with some items in it. Say item 1, item 2, and item 3. Now we need to pull this into our app.view in order for us to be able to use it. So why don't we do it right here. We'll say import tasks from and where where is this task? Where this task is up a directory in components and then task.view. Now the dot view part of it is optional. You don't have to run it. So we'll just leave it at task. I think it looks a little cleaner. So in my components, we need to tell view that we have this new task component. And then we can simply use it. We can say tasks right here like so. Or if you wanted to use the shorthand, you can actually just do this. That way you don't need to have both of those tasks. Let's hit save, head back to the browser. And sure enough, we are actually getting our component inside view CLI. Pretty cool, very easy, and it's already set up for us. There's basically zero configuration needed. So what about this GUI that we talked about? What about the graphic interface? Let's look back at the documentation. Back in our basics, there is a using the GUI. And so all we need to run is view UI to pull open this very nice GUI interface. So why don't we try that? I'm going to stop this process with control C and let's run view UI. And there it is. So this is views project manager in a UI form. So this is yet another way that we can create a project. The same exact way that we created a project through the terminal, view UI actually allows you to do it in a more graphical way. Now some of you may prefer this, so that's why I'm showing you. So why don't we create another project? Let's do create. It's going to default to the same directory that we were in, but why don't we change this back and make a new project in my root code directory. Let's create a new project. Let's type a name. How about testing UI? We are using NPM, but there are a couple of other things that you can use. So I will just actually say NPM. And it is able to initialize a Git repository for you right off the bat. So that's also pretty cool. You can uncheck this if you don't want that, but you probably would want that, so leave that on. And then here, this is the exact same option that we got asked when we were running through the terminal. So let's click on default preset and create project. Now creating a project will basically do the exact same thing, except we don't get as much feedback. It does feel a little bit more modern because you're not seeing all this text kind of flow through you. So this is a nice alternative for those of you that are not super comfortable with the terminal. So let's wait for it to finish and we'll be right back. And we are back. Pretty cool. It took about 30 seconds to complete. So expect about a 30 second delay on that one. So let's explore this dashboard. But of course, I highly recommend you install it yourself and take a look around by yourself. But I just want to point a couple of things out for you. So the first thing is this plugins section. As you bring in some plugins, they will actually show up here, which is a really, really nice way of checking out what you are using. And another nice thing is when you have a lot of different plugins installed, you can actually use this search bar up here to just narrow it down. So what about say just CLI service and you see how it actually filters down these plugins. So that's also a cool little tool that you get right out of the box. Now in this dependencies, these are all your different dependencies that you have. These are the ones that you would install through NPM. And then we have a project configuration. Now remember that we used ESLint. So this is where things like error checking and linting of your code will actually happen. And you have all of these different rules on how you want to handle your code. 
pretty cool tool. It is a little bit more advanced, but it's nice that you have a really nice graphical interface to interact with it. And then finally, we have this tasks. And this is where you're going to spend most of your time in your development stages. We have the serve, the build command, lint, and inspect. So we can simply hit this serve command and we can boot up the same development environment that we booted up whenever we ran npm run serve. But in this scenario, all we have to do is click this run task right here, and this will compile all of our code for us, and it will even pop it open in the browser. So let's click right here where it says open app, and sure enough, we go back to the default app. Now remember, I started a new project, so the changes that we had made to our other project will not reflect in this project. This is a brand new project. So pretty cool stuff all the way around with this, and all of it without using the terminal. Really, all you need is the terminal just to get you started, but then you can continue to use the UI tool if you are a little bit more comfortable with that instead. So we can always stop the task by clicking this button again, and now this page is no longer available to us because obviously we stopped running that task. So if you go to your project and you're getting something like this, then all you need to do is go ahead and rerun your serve task so that you can actually have your project pop open in the browser. I love the UI tool. I don't use it personally, but I know that it has really good uses all the way around. Another thing you can take a look at is the analyzer. So the analyzer will keep track of your statistics, right? These projects do tend to get a little bit large. And as you pull in more and more dependencies, your files really grow. So this is a good place for you to be able to keep track and make sure that there is no one library that is just too big and taking up too much space. Very nice graphical interface. You really cannot get this type of visualization anywhere else but the View UI tool. So very cool that they did all of this for us. And we can see sort of how much damage each of these packages that we are pulling in is doing to our loading time. So as we see here, our actual source file, which is the code that we would actually write, is a very, very, very tiny part of all of this other stuff that gets loaded in with your page. So if you're having loading issues or you just want a really, really fast app, this is a great way to visualize what is taking so long or what is causing something to be slower in your application. Great UI tool for that. So in closing, I just want to show you one more thing. If you go down here under the deployment section, of course, at some point, our app will need to be deployed somewhere. So what they've done is they've included a lot of the common places where you can deploy a view application. So there are instructions here for about 15 or so different services and detailed instructions on how to actually publish your view application to these different services. So if you are looking for Amazon S3, for example, there's a nice plugin that you can use. Same thing for Firebase or any of the other services here available to you. So very cool tool. We will continue to explore some more of the Vue CLI in the coming lessons, but that is the crash course on how to get it installed and get it running in your local environment.